Hi, um, right it's been a while since I've last done a video um, I've been busy in a variety of ways and had a few other issues going on but anyway I thought I'd do this now I mentioned this briefly on UK VAC a while back that I was working on a new test system now this is going to run in conjunction with the existing tester so the existing tester is still very valid and still getting worked on and improving all the time uh, but this tester I sort of had an idea last year to do something because the the existing tester has some limitations and certain things um, so this tester was designed to try and get around some of the problems and also allow it to tackle boards that the existing tester probably couldn't have done very easily so this is it this is what I'm going to call the AR16 not the AR81 which is the existing one the reason it's AR16 is because this is a 16-bit tester um, and at the moment it looks pretty much like the existing tester not a lot of difference the only thing you will notice is the connector at the front is different the LED is not an LED anymore it's actually an LCD display and it's two lines of 16 characters so as you can see with this you can actually put a bit more information on the connector at the front is not the two D-type connectors this video by the way is just it's just an introductory video just to show you the tester and talk about some of the little features it's got. Uh, I'm going to do some videos after this of actually showing it in use and doing things with it, right? But anyway, this is a 96 pin connector. Um, and the reason it's 96 pins is because it needed extra pins uh, for some of the extra signals. This has actually got a full 32 bit address bus and it's got a full 16-bit data bus plus a load of other signals as well so when you add all that up you can't possibly feed that into a two 25 pin connectors so you needed a bigger connector so it's a 96 pin connector you've got the BNC at the front which is for the probe as the old one did an LED tape it's on obviously that and this is the usual three and a half inch LCD screen touch screen which is currently showing nothing because I've got it running on HDMI up there. So, so far, not hugely different. Um, at the side, if I show it, excuse the mess, we have the same connectors as the AR81, uh, the Mark II that is. We have a 20 pin ADT connector and we have a 10 pin connector at the side which can be used for uh, a logic analyzer input etc currently not doing much at the moment the ADT is working the other side if you can see down there I'll move it is all the usual USBs and stuff like that which you get with a Raspberry Pi and at the back excuse the mess you get the usual connectors any difference is there is that one there if you can maybe see it which is actually uh, a video output and I'll explain that in a bit so we'll take the lid off this and we'll see what's in it so you can see there's some rather different hardware inside. Whoops, excuse that, looks good. This is going to focus. Is it going to focus? There we go. Camera doesn't focus. A little bit different inside from the R81. What we have in here is we have a different motherboard. You can see most of it is surface mount, and also most of it is running with dual CPLD chips. Uh, we also have a plug-in which is currently a bit available but this is going to change. This is an analog board which handles the probe. The usual Raspberry Pi 3 um, or 3B or whatever it is now. We also have instead of a mega Arduino inside it we have an Arduino Dure. The reason for that is because it needs a little bit extra power to do some of the things it's doing and this thing is running an ARM processor I think about 84 megahertz the only problem with this is it all runs at 3.3 volts so the motherboard is pretty much a 3.3 volt motherboard um, fan cooled and all the other things is usually the, just as usual um, 
I said it's all 3.3 but the connector at the front is 5 volt so this can connect up to your usual PCBs etc without any issues and obviously it all converts inside to 3.3 and whatever else uh, and that's pretty much it so you can see it's a proper motherboard there will be a speaker in there, I haven't got it in there, but there's a speaker, so you've got the audio amp and all that as usual. You've got the buzzer that bleeps when you do certain things. Fan cool to keep it all nice and cool. And that really is it. So, first glances, doesn't look much different. The only thing is it's got a bigger connector and a fancier display at the front. Um, however, uh, it is a lot more powerful than the old tester. Because obviously the extra pins it's got, and these pins are fully programmable, and they're also bi-directional, uh, it means that it can handle 68,000. And I have actually got a 68,000 emulator running on this tester now, that allows you to plug it into a 68,000 board, start and stop the processor, step the processor, etc. And also it allows you to go in get memory maps, read write memory, all that sort of stuff as well. It can also support the Z80 which was the old favourite. It can also support the 6502. Um, it can support a 2650 but not very well, it can do it. There was a few issues with that but the main problem I've had with that is I haven't actually got a working 2650 board. So I can get information out of it but I can't really develop it properly because I haven't got a working board at the moment. Uh, the other one it can also handle is an 8085 and it can get, you can, I've had good results with an 8085 on it. Um, so it's got a lot of potential. The other thing it can also do is the ADT, which is the cable coming out the side, is now separate from the connector at the front. With the AR81, the ADT shared the same address and data lines as the board would do. So with the NAR81, you could only have the tester running the board or reading the board, or you could have it doing the ADT. You couldn't have both. With the AR16, the two are separated. As a result of that, you can actually run the board and also have the ADT running at the same time and because of that you can do other things with it so the ADT can now be used uh, as a sort of a signal trace method as well so you can use the ADT clip and you can plug it into a board and you can tell what signal pins of the process were going back to the ADT pins and it will do all that for you it can also measure the frequency of the board um, and it can measure frequencies up to say 6 meg, 10 meg it will measure those quite accurately you can use the probe to measure a frequency um, and a lot of other things which I will detail in some more videos we'll connect it up soon and do another video of it doing some things and I'll go through some of the features that it can, it can do but there's a lot a lot of clever things this can now do. It can go into different address and data modes as well. If you see at the front there, it tells you it's a Z80 and it's 16-8. What that means is it's set up for 16 address lines and 8 data lines. So the display, is the, the address is still 4 digits for the hex and 2 for the data, which gives you the 8 digits and the 16 there, which is a 16-8. And that's what you need for obviously for a Z80. When you go into different processors it will change the address mode so it will then do the full address range etc. So that's that's it. So that that is the first glance really of an AR16 and this is a pre-production prototype tester which is running and I have been using it for debug already um, and as I say, it's all working. The software is coming on very well, and it's actually now working with 68,000s, Z80s, 6502s, etc. So I'll stop this video now, but that's the first of a few videos showing the R16. The next video I'm going to show you 
is having this connected up and I'm going to go through some of the features that you can do using the software and then you can start to see some of the things it can get up to. So I hope this is of interest um, and uh, we'll take it from here. Thanks again. Bye.